us on the conversation, Central Manchester MP Peter Bunting, my guest, talking about his challenge for the leadership of the People's National Party in Jamaica. You know, one of the things that is somewhat curious for me, who I must tell the viewers, I don't know Peter Bunting very well. I know people who know him very well, who have asked. He doesn't know I know them, but that's another story. And I know a little. And for me, I've never thought of Peter Bunting as a man that I don't like for whatever reason. But for some reason, there are people who say, well, there, there are some people who are almost aggressive in their dislike for you. Social media, you post something and you, look, you read the threads and it's all kind of invective. Mind you, social media attracts that kind of, 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 a lot of them are trolls. But, 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 but <laughs> for, the, for, for the most part, you get a, 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 a faction, a, 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 I don't want to call them as big as a constituency, a group of people that whenever you say something, it's almost as if, yeah, look at Peter Bunting talking. When you had the issue, the, 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 the Nigel Clark issue, I want to call it, the now finance minister, people are saying, oh, these are the elitist comments of someone who doesn't know what it is to struggle and come up as if they know your background. <laughs> then you have the issue of when it, when it is that you, in the parliament, say certain things, people are saying, well, it's not from a man who is a genuine man of the people. Have you thought, contemplated about why there are some people who are so vociferous in their dislike for you, people in the party who say they don't trust you, and I ask, well, why don't you trust Bunting? His name has never been linked to a scandal. There are many misdeeds that many members of the PNP have been linked with. You've never heard anything like him. Why would you attach dislike to his name? Have you contemplated those things? You know, I don't know if it's because we're coming from a, a, a lift of center kind of position, uh, particularly most recently in the 70s, mm. that person seemed, some people seem to be ambivalent about, oh, this man is a capitalist. Why should he be in, in the leadership of a, of a socialist party? And I, I believe there is, that's one contributor to that. I think there's a, a second issue in that I'm actually a shy person, but pers people don't think a politician could, could be shy. Yes. So, you know, when I went to Central Manchester, for example, people were accustomed to John Juno. John Juno never passed four or five people standing up and don't pull over mm -hmm. and wade into the crowd, hugging up everybody, whether he knows them or not. That was just his personality. Mm -hmm. My personality, if I come into a crowded room of people that I don't know, I would sort of stand off to one side and see if I can pick out a, a familiar, familiar face. face and then sort of gradually um, make my way through that. So I think there's, there's perhaps a number of factors. I think also because I am fairly hard hitting against the government and I, particularly on corruption mm -hmm. issues, I, I tend to be a polarizing figure where the persons who are supportive of the government mm -hmm. tend to say, you know, that fellow Bunting is that pain in you know where, yes. you know where. It's cable TV, you and can see. So <laughs> <laughs> and, and therefore, you know, there are people who target me just because of this sort of tribal and sometimes toxic nature mm -hmm. that you get in the political space in social media. But what about the comrades themselves? Because I've spoken to comrades. I've, well, before now, I spent every day in the hard news, in the politics, and I've heard certain comrades say it, and I've questioned them to say, well, what, what evidence do you have? Because I'm keen to know on what basis you are saying that you don't trust him, anybody but Bunting. Why? Why is it that Bunting is not a man to be trusted? What is it that you know that I don't? What do they know that I don't? Uh, I, they, they would have to tell you that. But as I said, I know there is an element, particularly of the, when I sort of came full time into the politics in, in the 1990, in, in basically Michael Manley's second period in office when he came back as prime minister in 89 yes. to 92. He, he reached out to me deliberately and recruited me into the public sector first and, and then into um, political representation. And one of the things he said to me is that, you know, the PNP has been a party of, of socialists. We're now moving to a market economy and liberalization, deregulation, privatization. You're coming from a, you know, without fairly freshly minted MBA from USA, you spent, um, you worked with Citibank, you worked in multinationals, you started a company, you mm -hmm. understand this process at a sort of cellular level, mm -hmm. while we don't. Yes. So come in and help us work through that. 
and it was a quite a, a difficult time. He, if anybody else but Michael Manley, I don't think would have been able to persuade people to, to make that um, pivot mm -hmm. from the sort of the state controlling the commanding heights of the economy in the 70s yes. to um, we're going to be a market-oriented people. And he was able to, in his own mind first, and then for, for many of the rest of us, help us understand the difference between objectives and methods. Democratic socialism was a method. Mm -hmm. The objective was um, improving the quality of life of the people, equality of opportunity, those justice, social justice issues. Those were the objectives. But some people were conflating that mm -hmm. with the methods, yes. which was the democratic socialism. And I think he, he actually wrote a document, you know, at a sort of towards the end of those discussions and debates and arguments in a party called the Compass, which attempted to make that sort of distinction. And interestingly, in, in the book of final interviews that he did, um, which I have an advanced reader's copy, it's, it's going to be published next month, um, he speaks that as perhaps being his greatest accomplishment, mm -hmm. being able to, to, to turn the party around in terms of its approach to economic management. Um, in the 89-92 period. Yeah. So you say all of that about Mr. Manley to say that those within the party who, who are suspicious of you. Those, they, they would have been some from that time yes. who would not have appreciated my role, who would have been more on the leftist side, who had not, um, you know, who had not seen as clearly as Michael Manley did mm -hmm. that this was now the past. Mm -hmm. You know, it had not worked and sort of shake the dust from your feet and, and move on. So I think there's still that e element. Do you accept the reality in the Jamaican context, Peter, that Jamaicans are suspicious naturally of wealthy politicians? I don't know why, but it seems to be the case. For me and my generation, we celebrate wealth. We applaud people who are wealthy. We say, congrats, well done, because we want to do. But th there seems again, it's maybe it's a generation thing, where wealthy politician, there's just this natural snobbery against him. Do you think you're a victim of that, both inside and outside of your party? Well, <laughs> I don't know if it's wealthy politicians. For, fortunately, in my case, I came to politics. Wealthy. Um, you know, but you still are a wealthy politician because you're wealthy <laughs> and you're a politician. He calls wealthy politician. I so think, that's what I mean. I think there, there's room more suspicion of those who have done nothing but yes, politics. And are wealthy. And are wealthy. There you go. But, um, there is that sort of thing, and I think it's generational. Yes. Um, as you say, the, perhaps those who are under 45 mm -hmm. take a totally different view. We do. They're probably more influenced by American culture, which is unapologetic about success, and success as defined by, by you know, doing well and being wealthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in, in, when I was growing up, that was sort of, it was, I think, a more British system where it was sort of, you know, you were always understated and, uh, as you said, almost apologetic yes. for being successful. And certainly the, in the 70s, you know, that would have been the, the case. Uh, young people now, I think they want somebody who is successful. Mm -hmm. they're, they're interested in how can I get from how can I get my idea to write this new smartphone app mm -hmm. and it going boss and become a, the next Uber or um, Airbnb or mm -hmm. something like that. Th this is their, their mindset now. This is what I find when I engage young people. And they, what they're asking me is, okay, we know that you were able to accomplish this. We know that you, know, you didn't inherit this. Mm -hmm. We want you to help us understand how to get from where we are to the next level that we aspire to. And we think you have some credibility in that regard. You know, the 2016 general election, of course, the gentleman Paul Burke was general secretary of the PNP at that time. And after the PNP lost, I remember a prominent member of the PNP saying, I won't tell you who it was, but you may know, saying that, well, what are we to expect? the general secretary of the party doesn't even have WhatsApp on his phone. 
that was then. And I checked with other people, and that was re the, the report was that, yeah, that's actually so. In 2016, the general secretary of the party that says it's the biggest and most successful political party in the speaking Caribbean, and it was, does not have that, is not up with the technology. What kind of PNP then are you trying to take over? Isn't the PNP that you're trying to take over so steeped in the past, uh, Peter Bunting, and so leaden-footed that even with a change at the top, it can't stand a chance against a streamlined JLP across the fence? I think there's been some slippage since my time as general secretary, and, and I acknowledge that. But it won't take long to turn it around, you know, Having done it once before, mm -hmm. when I came in between 2008 and 2011, um, I think I understand the blueprint. I, I think I know that you don't try and run today's social media dominated communication environment um, with persons who are not digital natives. Yes. I may not be the you know, have the technical skills myself, yes. but I recognize the value of it and I know where to go and find it, to yes. go and recruit it. Yes. So my, my team will be a team of, particularly in that area, the whole communications and social media, um, persons who, who, who would look on you as elder. Yes, <laughs> yes, can you imagine, yes. yes. So, you know, that, and, and it's, it's, just, it's just a given, no matter how much, you know, and, and it's, not, it's not a disrespect to the persons who have been in the industry, advertising, communications, mm. PR, for the last 40 or 50 years. Yes. It's not a disrespect, yes. but the paradigm has shifted. Yeah. And the skill set that you would have acquired then really are not all relevant now. Or, or put it this way, there's a big gap in yeah. the skill set. Hear you on that. When we come back, the final segment where Peter Bunting talks about what the PNP will look like under his leadership if he's successful come September.